All right, guys, what's going on? I wanted to jump on here real quick, and I wanted to talk about the um, uh, the Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia post-fight. Just ended about 20 minutes ago. I wanted to jump on here and give you my thoughts about what I saw, about the video that I shot, um, about 30 minutes of breaking down the fight, their pros, their cons, what their paths were to win, um, what I thought they needed to do, what they needed to stay away from, and then I'm going to kind of gel it into what exactly happened. Um, before I do that, though, I do want to jump on here, and I want to talk about something that really bothers me. Um, and it bothers me on a nightly and daily basis, um, but it bothered me again tonight because this is a sport that I, I, I really, really love. I've loved since I was a kid, and when you get all these people coming out of the woodwork saying things, it, it does disturb me and bother me a little bit. Um, every time there is a fight, it's, you're going to get a group of people all of a sudden now everything is fixed. Baseball is fixed. Every game is fixed. Um, uh, football is fixed. Basketball is fixed. Football is fixed. Boxing is fixed. MMA is fixed. Everything is fixed. We're living in a world now where every nobody takes ownership anymore. Everything is fixed. You know, and I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to say boxing doesn't have fixes. And there's not collusion in boxing. And there's not dark matter flying around in boxing. I've been around boxing long enough to see some of the really sketchy shit. And I've been around boxing long enough to know really sketchy stuff. You know, so for the people tonight that were on Twitter and, you know, saying the, the, the fight, he took a dive, he took a dive, he took a dive. But, you know, you don't hesitate like that. He thought about he didn't want to fight no more. So he took a knee like it's got to stop. Like you guys got to really pick and choose your spots with who, what outlets you're listening to and with anything. I mean, if you're constantly talking to people that everything is fixed, like it's got to go. Like, like there's, there, there, it's no point in talking to people like that at that point. I, I can't even listen to it anymore. Like there's people that I know that literally tonight texted me asking me, do you think he took a dive? And I didn't even answer them. I didn't even respond, you know, cause they just don't get it. And no, a couple people that did text me, they, they don't watch boxing. Like. They'll watch the big fights, the pay-per-view fights and stuff like that. Uh, uh, come on, you know, he hesitated. Do you think he took a dive? He did not take a dive in that fight. If anybody knows boxing, if anyone's boxed before, if everyone's getting hit by the liver before, I've been hit in the liver numerous times to know that's exactly the way you react. You don't get hit in the jaw or hit up top and then your eyes roll back and you're out and uh, you're, you're falling down and you're out on the way down. That's not the way it happens. When you get hit in the liver, it goes to your head, your body tells signals down to your body, and boom, then it goes down. By the time it hits you, then you realize what the hell just happened. Your body just completely seizes. It's a delayed reaction when you get hit in the liver. You just don't get hit in the liver. And, uh, you get hit in the liver and you, you, you kind of wince, you feel it, and then all of a sudden your body just starts to shut down and locks. And once it locks, you have no control anymore. You listen to your body. Your body pretty much tells you shut down and you're down. So when he took a knee, his body was locked. Now, did I think he was going to get up? I did think he was going to get up for the mere fact that I didn't realize how bad of a shot it was when he took that shot. Okay, I didn't realize what a bad, how bad of a shot it was. I, I realized it more when I saw where it was placed on slow-mo, that it was a perfectly placed liver shot. Um, but for these people that are coming out saying that he took a dive, he did not take a dive. The guy did not take a dive. This fight was not a fix in any way, shape, or form. So let's just clear the air with that. I'm sick of hearing all these people that everything that happens in sports is fixed. Yes, we all understand that 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 some situations are fixed. We can make a good excuse for um, for uh, Canelo versus Triple G, that one fight, where I think the masses know that Triple G won that fight, and they kind of took that from him. We can question that. We can question judges like Adelaide Bird and stuff like that. We can question these things. You do not question this fight. This fight was not a dive. So, like, not everything in sports, not everything in life is a fix. You got to learn to take ownership sometimes. You know what I mean? Learn to take ownership sometimes, whether if you pick the fight wrong or you picked it right or whatever, you pick the game right or pick the game wrong, whatever it is. Not, not There's no this big conspiracy with all sports. It doesn't happen all the time. It's, it's, it doesn't happen a lot more than it does happen. Okay? So, yeah, you get your spots where it does happen, but let's let's cut it out now when everything is fixed in life. It's stop. Um, as far as the fight, when you look at the first round, what do we got? You got to give the first round to Garcia. Why? Davis threw seven punches. He landed one. Garcia was kind of one, kind of the one utilizing the real estate of the cage, kind of dictating the dance a little bit. Not doing much either, but if you really watch boxing, you understand that round number one is the feel-out round. Unless you're Hagler and Hearns, which that would have been awesome if it, if it was something like that. 
But you're kind of throwing grenades out. You're throwing little landmines out. And you're just trying to see what he's going to step on, what he's not going to step on. You're baiting traps. You're trying to see what he's doing. You're, you're giving feints. You're trying to get his reactions. What it, was he reacting to? What is he not reacting to? Not to mention they're also respecting each other's power. They Both of these guys have good power. They both respect it. So they got to play a little bit more tentative. But Garcia was a little bit more active. We give him the first round. Second round comes. Now, this is where age kicks in. Okay, this is where age kicks in, and this is where you the, the, the veteran savvy of a fighter, the experience of a fighter, the, the ring hours, the... The, 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 the maturity of a fighter really needs to kick in, and that's something that we knew that Ryan Garcia was questionable. He's 24 years old. He's a young kid. He's a cowboy, you know, and um, basically what happened in the second round, he started feeling himself a little bit. He started good. He tagged him with a shot. He saw a reaction, and instead of using the maturity, the discipline, the patience to kind of see what that reaction was, he went in for a kill. He started unloading on him, thinking that reaction was, I heard him reaction. He got excited. He overcommitted. He got caught. That comes with experience. That comes with age. That comes with discipline. That comes with ring hours. Um, he got caught. He went down. Now, in between the rest of the fight, the, the next couple rounds after that, what did we see? We saw Garcia kind of trigger shy a little bit, right? He didn't like that. He ended up charging the foxhole. He ended up diving in. The fox came out and bit him. So now he's looking at the foxhole and he's kind of poking and prodding at it, but he's not certain he wants to jump in right now. Okay, so basically what you saw from there is now you see the trajectory changing a little bit. You saw Davis kind of, you know, finding a home for the left, and you know he was a little Garcia was a little more tentative. Uh, tentative. Garcia started to win some rounds, and that's what happens now when you kind of shy the wolf off. When you got the hunted, the hunter's coming in, he's and he's trying to hunt, and then all of a sudden the fox comes out of the foxhole, nips you. Now you're backing up and you're. You're not, you don't know if you want to go back in there. So that's kind of what happened with Garcia. He kind of got a little trigger shy in there, right? The round started going on. He started gaining his legs back again. He wasn't hurt in that knockdown, but his confidence was hurt. He was rattled a little bit. And um, he, he wasn't expecting that. I think he kind of knew what he was in there with at that point. Uh, and he knew he was going to have to really, really make some adjustments and work. And it just wasn't looking good. I mean, from that second round knockdown, you get knocked down in the second round. I mean, you need some constitution at that age to really come back against a guy like Tank. Uh, but he did. He started to come back right before the knockout. He ended up winning around. He ended up feeling himself again. He started tagging him again. He started getting his confidence back again. Now he's starting, he started to get that confidence where he started, I'm going to go back to that foxhole a little bit. I'm going to go back. And he started creeping his way back to that foxhole. Started landing some harder shots. Started landing some harder shots. Then he kind of dove in a little bit too much, overcommitted, and Tank came under the body corner with a beautiful liver shot that buckled him and put him down. So... It ended in seven and a half, uh, seven and a half rounds. I didn't, I didn't bet a side. I didn't bet on Garcia. I didn't bet on Tank. I really looked at it as a, a very tough fight to kind of call. Um, I saw that the over and under was at seven and a half. I did not like that either. That was kind of teetering the line for me. Um, I expected if Tank were to start coming on, he'd start coming on around the sixth round, fifth round, starting to figure him out a little bit. And then if he was going to win the fight, you'd give him a couple rounds and he'd, he'd uncork something on him. And, and he would put him to sleep. So I didn't like that seven and seven and a half round. That means you got to go out of the seventh round into the eighth round. And that's like Tank Davis's territory if he's going to win a fight. So what I did was I brought it down to six and a half. I did the all over six and a half rounds. And that was the sweet spot for me. Paid a little bit more juice for it, but that was the sweet spot for me. Um, and it cashed. And it cashed, you know, it was, it, was, it was close. I was sweating it a little bit. But it, it ended up... Hey, and so that's the side that I took. So we ended up coming out on top on that. Um, overall, what do I think about the fight? It was okay. It was, it was just okay for me. It wasn't a terrible fight. It wasn't a great fight. It was just okay for me. Uh, but lesson learned. Like, this is something that when you see these younger fighters, like, this is where these, in these big spots where every detail matters and every stone has to be unturned, those are the little finite details that can't be missed. The maturity, the, the, you know, the, the understanding discipline and patience and not overcommitting and not, you know, jumping in on the cheese and the mousetrap. Like, you got to be very careful of everywhere you step. You know, as the competition thickens, the landmines and, and, and everything get a lot more plentiful in that ring. And you got to be very mindful of what you're doing. And Garcia just got a little reckless in there at, at times. But it was okay. You got to give the kid credit. He's 24 years old. He'll be back. I believe he's going to 140. Davis is going to end up fighting a winner of Haney and Lomachenko, which is going to be a fantastic fight in May. And then... Whoever fights Davis is going to be another fantastic fight. So we got some great, great matchups. I'm going to break them all down. I obviously won't break up down here. 
I'll break them down in the studio with all the equipment that we have. But obviously, I'm not watching the fight there. I watch the fight here at home. So I hope you guys enjoyed the fights, and I will see you on the next video.